And with that, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. And folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN right now, Teddy has an outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. It comes out every Monday along with updates when warranted. Uh, just kick things off. And this month, folks, you can use code TEDDY25 only through July. So it's already July 20th, right? Use code TEDDY25. Save 25% for the lifetime of your subscription. You still got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so nothing to risk. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So where uh, where would you like to kick things off in this market, Teddy? We got crude sitting at about ninety nine dollars. Uh, we got the euro slightly getting a little bit of a lift back above parity. Uh, what are you looking at in this market to kick things off this week? Uh, I think one of the key things you got to watch. You had the Bank of Japan talking yesterday and also later on uh, today, which is are they going to do something with the rates or not? Probably not. So I'm thinking that you're not going to see anything really occur with that. But you do have some economic numbers for uh, Japan, the CPI being one of them tomorrow. I think that could actually rock the uh, U.S. dollar yen trade. Um, but that is something to watch um, if they do make a rate decision. You know, the yen has been one of the strongest trending currencies, you know, uh, that pair, of, you know, for the past like six months, especially. So if they do make a rate decision, um, meaning raising rates, which is kind of unlikely right now, if anything, Japan's probably going to wait a little bit longer and not fall under the pressure, I think, of uh, the rest of the global central banks. Yeah, quite a chart, man. When I put it up here, two big moves. You have the one in March into a high in May, a slight pullback for about three weeks, and then you take off again, and we're sitting almost right at those highs at 138, man. Uh, and then the ECB, right, tomorrow, we're probably going to get first hike in mm -hmm. 10, 11 years, probably 25, but now I know it's a little bit up in the air with 25 or 50. Um, mm -hmm. What are you looking at for their possible rate decision, how that plays into to the euro and some of the other currencies potentially? Uh, well, right now, I think that's what's giving the uh, the dollar index a little bit of pressure to the downside. And I, I believe that after tomorrow's meeting, once they are done with that decision, then it's going to just reverse gears and dollar strength will kick back in. So I think right now, this pullback in the dollar index, remember, the euro is the strongest component of that. Um, you know, that's been pulling back for the past uh, week. So I think that right now, anyone that read the, for the Tiger Forex report knows that we're coming right into our critical uh, target zone for this correction, which coincides with this ECB meeting. I think what will happen is tomorrow they'll do either they do raise the rates or they don't do anything, whatever it is. After that, you're going to see a sell off in the euro US dollar because the reality is, is we have a meeting coming up next week and we know we're going to get at least a three quarter of a point uh, hike, maybe upwards of a full full uh, percentage point. So that'll out that'll overtake anything the ECB does. You know, so the ECB thing is a one quick little unless they were to do something radical. But I don't think that they can. I mean, right now, all the economies in Europe are imploding. And it's pretty remarkable. I was reading about. I mean, it almost gets lost in everything going on over here, that they're sitting at negative 50 basis points right now, and they haven't raised in like 11 years, and the expectation mm -hmm. is they raise a quarter point, which would bring them to negative a quarter point as their rate. I mean, <laughs> even if they go 50 basis points, right, right. their rate's basically zero. Um, right. But it is a change in things, and maybe that is the reason you have a slight pullback. Boy, I got it mm -hmm. up, though. Even just the euro, U.S. dollar, you have a bounce here. But this destruction has been so tremendous that all you have yeah. is is lower lows and lower highs. And maybe right. this is one of those lower highs. Let's right. talk the a little bit. Of, still there. Right. Yeah. Very much intact. I would agree. Uh, let's talk a little bit of crude. So quite a little bounce we have going on from about ninety dollars last week. Yeah. Would we make ninety fifty six on mm -hmm. Thursday? You hit one hundred dollars just yesterday. What's your take on, on crude right now in, in where we are? Uh, well, last week's uh, swing low was a very critical support low. I think that's probably going to be your base. I mean, one of the things that is kind of giving it a little bit of a pause on crude right now is that the global demand in Europe, it's not because demand is waning because they don't want to use it, but there's rationing now of uh, energy uh, supplies, whether it's oil and gas and everything across the board throughout the EU, and it's getting more and more <clears throat> restrictive. So as that happens, you're having an artificial clampdown on demand. That's probably what's holding back crude right now. But as far as global supply, I think that no matter what, this is just a pause for the cause. No matter, I think that we're going to still see another bounce. Now, if crude gets back above 105, look out. Then we are. Then we're making higher move highs after a higher move low. That would confirm a neutral to higher basis. You know, our bias. Excuse me. 
it is pretty cool that we kind of just traded right back to that breakout area from February 25th. You give it all back from that first mm -hmm. acceleration, you touch almost $90, and just like that, we're back at $100 like nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, our notes and bonds. So we have a little bit of a reprieve right mm -hmm. now. The 10 year sitting about 2.96, I think. You got the 30 year at 139 and change off of about 131. Uh, where do you see maybe that bond market going, given a tease with, with everything going mm -hmm. on with the ECB having, having their action tomorrow? Um, and of course, with the Fed having a meeting, when is it? Next week, right? Just that right, quick. Next, next Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Well, I think right now what you have is, I mean, you can see that the, the, the interest rate markets right now are kind of wedging. You know, they're not really, they're not trending. They're actually just kind of consolidating. And I think that what you're going to see is basically the pump before the dump, you know. So, like going into this ECB me meeting, I wouldn't doubt that you're going to see the, the the bonds and the and the ten year probably rally a little bit over the next, uh, you know, few day, a day or so, and then after that, we're going to start heading into that Fed meeting. So we know that the expectations are for at least a three quarter of a point hike, upwards of a percentage point. So I think we'll see the bonds heading towards their lows going into Tuesday. It'll be sometime between tomorrow and Tuesday heading back on support. But remember, during the Fed meeting, stay away from the interest rates because they're going to probably be very, very choppy and sideways on Tuesday and into Wednesday's number. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see how it's going to play out, especially now that you're going to have the ECB potentially in a hiking cycle. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of these paths have been dead set, right, with the U.S., and they have so far to go. Right. I wonder how far they can go. I was reading an article earlier this week talking about that their window was already tightening even before they started hiking mm -hmm. in terms of the market expectation for their total hikes this year already going mm -hmm. down just on the prospect that they can't really handle it, man, um, with this economy, not like we can, um, at least, and we're even in a tough spot mm -hmm. right now. You hit the nail on the head right there, Tommy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, man, and folks, you know, Forex, even if you don't trade Forex, I've learned so much in talking to Teddy, now reading his report every week. It's shaping so much of what's going on. I mean, I know we've talked to you about it before, Teddy, and maybe it's just because I talk to you every week now and I understand the market right. better. But it seems like this is a, an especially important time with like everything going on with Forex, with the interest rate structures of each country mm -hmm. and how that's driving. I mean, we're going to see it in this earnings season right now, man. You know, with the For dollar sure. and these companies, if you're not following Forex and, and what these companies are doing, it's it's going to be a huge part of this earnings. Is this is this an especially interesting time as somebody that's big into Forex like yourself? Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's the thing that most people don't understand is the dynamics of how currencies really affect things. And right now, when you have basically hyperinflation around the globe, you know, and you have all these supply chain issues and what have you, it compounds these things, you know. Yeah. And, comp you know, right now, a strong dollar, you know, lots of people are, you know, they're like, well, a, dollar, a strong dollar is good for us, but it's really hammering our, uh, you know, the people we do trade with outside of the U.S. Oh, I mean, the moves are just staggering, man. The yen, right. the euro. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report. Enter code TEDDY25. Sign up. Save 25%. Teddy, man, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, Tommy. Have a great okay, day. Okay, take you. care, man. We'll be right back, folks.